So guys, I finally did it. I bought The Sims. Wow, I can't stop playing it. Hello everyone, I am here today to share with you guys another round of buy or buy, and today I am talking about the brand Anastasia Beverly Hills. I have gotten so many requests from you guys to do more of these full brand buy or buy type videos, sharing with you guys my favorite products, my least favorite products, what I think is worth the hype and what isn't. So I want to do more of these moving forward. So make sure you follow me on Instagram because every month I'm going to do an Insta story and ask you guys which brand you want me to do in the following month. So make sure you go over and you vote to see which brand is going to be featured in the next round of buyer buys. You can check out the full playlist of the other brands that I have done. I will be doing updated ones as well. I have done a ton of brands in the past and they constantly come out with like 7,000 new products every year. So if you want to go and check out some other brands, I will link the full playlist at the end of this video for you guys as well as in the info bar below. Make sure you give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe so you don't miss out on new videos every Thursday and also on Sunday. And without further ado, let's get into this. So for those of you that are new to my buyer buys, I do an emoji rating scale where I rate and like kind of group the products into either like four or five emojis out of five and then like one or two emojis out of five. And I choose a new emoji or at least I try to in every single video. So this one I want to do the crown because the kind of logo has like a crown in it, right? Did I make that up? No, that's for sure. That's, that's a crown on top of the A. So I want to start with the four or five crowns out of five. So these are like the the Queen of England crown. It's the one that we envision Beyonce wears to bed. So the first product I want to talk about is a highlight and I have talked about this in a ton of my videos. It is one of my favorites and I'm so glad that they brought it back because they they launched it and then they got rid of it and I was like no. But then they relaunched it at the end of last year and I'm so glad because I use it all the time on myself, my friends, my family, anytime I'm doing other people's makeup because I find it to be so flattering on a ton of different skin tones. And it is the Amorizi collab that they did with um, the Instagrammer Amorizi. And I love the packaging. First of all, it has this beautiful 3D kind of a wave-like texture because she wanted the highlight to almost give like a wet-like sheen to the skin. And it has this gorgeous, almost like a, like a pearl champagne like undertone. And it looks metallic, like metallic wet on the skin. I've worn this in so many different videos. It is ridiculous. It is such a good highlight. Highly recommend it. In love. Next up, I want to talk about her eyeshadow palettes because um, I have some unpopular opinions on these. Now, first off, I want to talk about the consistency of the eyeshadows um, that I have found to be consistent across all of the different eyeshadow palettes that I've bought over the years. And it is a very soft, very pigmented, but very impactful formula, which works for a lot of people. But I remember my first time trying out the Modern Renaissance palette and I was like, whoa, I was not prepared for that. So much product gets picked up every single time you dip your brush in as so you have to be careful and use a very, very minimal amount. Um, and I find that is the best way to use the product. So, I mean, she's launched a lot of eyeshadow palettes. I love, by the way, that she launched Modern Renaissance. It was like 17 years and then she launched like 15 of them. But I have a couple that are my favorites. I just really like the colors, the undertones, the payoff, and just the wearability for myself personally that I'm going to include in the four or five grounds. But are all, there are also ones that I just, I didn't like that much. So I will save those for a little bit later. So the first one I want to talk about is the one that I'm wearing on my eyes right now. And that is the Sultry palette. And I love this one because it's cool tone. And I feel like no one is making cool tones anymore, but I feel like they're making a little bit of a comeback right now, which I'm about. The shimmers are pretty like this pearl one looks beautiful on the inner corner. I use a lot of birch and twig right here. All the colors really work well together. Even this bloom shade, I wasn't sure about, but it works really well in complement with some of these other tones and kind of mixing and matching. And she made sure that all of the shades really complement each other and work well with each other, which is great. So I love this palette. I also love the Soft Glam palette. I've used this on a bunch of um, my friends that got married this past summer. Um, and this is just a really great, easy palette palette. A lot of people swear by this one. It's actually, I believe the number one eyeshadow palette on Sephora from ABH, which it used to be modern Renaissance for like a lot of years. And then the other one, which I feel like a lot of people are going to disagree with me, but hear me out is the subculture palette. A lot of people dislike this palette to like extreme levels. It had some serious drama. People were mad at this eyeshadow palette. And in case you missed all of that drama, I guess there was a big shipment of this particular palette 
where the eyeshadows weren't pressed properly was my understanding of it. Um, so a lot of people found that the eyeshadows were extremely crumbly and they didn't wear very well. People just weren't in love with this particular eyeshadow palette, but when I bought it, I really liked it. This is what it looks like right here. I found it personally to be no different than the Modern Renaissance palette in terms of how crumbly they are. They pick up so much product as soon as you tap a brush into it. And I found that to be the case regardless of what palette I pick up. But I love the color palette that you played here. It's just very fall. It's got a lot of mattes and muted like teals and yellows and coppers and just I, everything about this I really really love. There were a couple of shades that I wasn't a huge fan of like electric I was like meh about though it does look really pretty in pan um, but I found myself like constantly reaching for them. They blended out really beautifully into my crease which sometimes I can find uh, shadows to be a really big struggle in that area but using like dawn and mercury edge fudge roxy like these shades right here just worked really well together and i could create really nice cohesive looks pop a little of untamed on there just for like a nice pop of color and yeah i really like this no one else seemed to enjoy it, but I thought it was great. Next up is their Liquid Glow, in particular the shade Perla for me. Um, this is a liquid highlighter and I use this so much kind of mixed in with my foundation and it just adds this incredible dewiness that makes my skin just look incredibly healthy and shiny and like lit from within. Like sometimes I find with liquid highlights like this, like I will put them on, I'm like, oh, they look gorgeous. And then they dry down and they just look like sparkles all over your face. But this one seems to dry down to almost like a metallic sheen, which is gorgeous. And it mixes so well with a bunch of different foundations or primers if you wanted, just layered on top as a liquid highlight is beautiful as well. I love this product. Next up, I wanna talk about their matte lipsticks. And I have a specific color that I wanna mention for this category because I find that for the matte lipsticks, they are a little all over the place for me. I find some of the deeper shades look very patchy when I apply them and other ones they just are very dry and or they dry out really quickly. This one I've had a lot of success with so I wanted to mention it. It's in the shade Kiss and it's a nice light like warm nude pink just like a good your lips but better kind of shade. I'll wear this by itself if you like more of like a matte kind of a lip or I'll put a, lip, a gloss on top and that looks beautiful as well. It's not super long wearing but because it's more of like a like a nude look I don't really notice when it starts to fade if that makes sense. Now I want to talk about their glow kits and in particular the sweets glow kit because this was sort of like a the first that I found in that metallic powder highlight kind of category and I fell in love with these. It's been a while since I use them but I do want to mention them because we're talking about the brand in general and because I think that the quality of these is really incredible. It comes in four different shades. They're very very creamy, super metallic and they just look unbelievable on the skin. This one has more of like a not quite green but like a really soft gold kind of a vibe to it which is really interesting. Um, this butterscotch shade is also really pretty though it's a little dark for my skin tone but I think most people can pull that off. But yeah these are super vibrant. They blend out like a dream. They're gorgeous gorgeous tones. It's just it's not something that I've used in a while but I do want to mention it because I think that the consistency and the quality of them is really really good. And honestly now that I've like swatched them all over myself I kind of want to use them more. I'm gonna take that, put that in my everyday makeup drawer. The joys of doing bar buys. Sometimes you come across products that you forgot how much you love them. Now I want to switch gears and move into the category of products that's more, honestly, more like a three crowns out of five. I don't think I've come across anything from ABH that's like a one or even a two crown. Um, just it's just products that don't work for me that I don't really love. Just have something about them that makes me not use them all the time. But I still don't think that they're bad products. So three crowns out of five. Okay, so we're not in like Burger King crown territory, but we're not Queen of England either. What's in between those? Okay, when it's your birthday party and you get to wear the birthday party crown, and it's like, it's not the best quality crown or like even the best crown ever, but you feel like 
princess of the entire universe when you wear it. It's a crown, people. It still works. So first off, I want to talk about the product that you all are probably confused that I didn't mention earlier, and that is the Dip Brow Pomade. This is the shade Taupe. I use this for a number of years. The only reason that I haven't given this five stars is because it dries out so fast and these things can be so expensive and I find that there are other ones from the drugstore or even like I like I love the benefit one I find that one doesn't dry out as quickly this one I don't know what it is but I just I have to like take out a chunk and then blend it with a little bit of oil and then apply it and yes it's super waterproof the undertone is fantastic for this particular shade for myself um, the quality is good it's just Mm, it just dries out so fast and I find honestly that like I might as well just mention the other products now because I find that to be a trend across a lot of their gel or cream like products the same thing um, with their their gel eyeliner this is the shade black I just got a new one um, because it looks so good and it is so waterproof for the first little while that you wear it and if you remember to put the lid on like really really tight and all those things like it'll prolong the longevity of it a little bit but something about the consistency it just it tends to clump really quickly and it flakes and dries out but like oh it's so good for those first couple of months and then the other product is their cream contour and this is in the shade light this is definitely something that requires some work to blend like this is a very thick formula and it takes some work to blend it out and a little bit goes a long way especially if you're one that doesn't contour a lot i'm just gonna tell you from experience uh you, too much of this and it looks like you've been playing in dirt but i found a way that i really do enjoy using this is taking like a beauty blender or something like that dampening it and then pressing it into the product and applying it just kind of in the outside kind of like three and e kind of formation that works really well for me because it dilutes the product a little bit and makes it easier to blend out um so that way i really like if you are a hardcore person that loves good contour you're probably gonna like this and make a lot of use of it um but for me it's not something that i use on an everyday basis it's a much thicker formula i don't know what it is with them in like these gel formulas they're really good to start and then there's like this really harsh drop off i've also tried a couple of their tools this one is the number 12 brush this is for the brows obviously because they have a lot of brow products so it has a spoolie on one end and it has an angled kind of brush on the other end and it's fine i find that for whatever reason it's much like a thicker brush i personally like the benefit one a little bit better it just it's a little bit longer it's a little bit thinner so i can get much more precise hair like strokes versus this one it's just more of a personal preference thing i think the quality of the brush is still there it's just not my favorite speaking of brows actually their clear brow gel i have talked about this in videos before a lot of people are obsessed with it it was the reason that i actually found out about abh in general um and so i tried it i tried to make it work i tried to love it it's fine but like, that's it. It's just, it's fine. I find it to be no different than any of the drugstore ones that I've tried. Like you put it in and then within two hours, my brows are just like, this isn't my favorite. Um, also not a huge fan of the Modern Renaissance palette as well as the Norvina palette, though I don't know where that one is. I don't, I, I have no idea. And the reason isn't the quality. Like I've talked about these before. I've said that they're really good quality, but I wanted to kind of put these in a different category because it's my personal buyer buy and these ones just aren't ones that i really fell in love with i don't like the color palette here it just didn't work for me i wasn't reaching for it i wasn't inspired by it which i know is bizarre because so many people love this one this one i just wasn't a big fan of the norvina one i was so excited because it had these beautiful purple tones um but the shimmers just weren't there for me they just didn't blend and look as pretty and complement each other all the different tones in there as much as I would have liked and I just I yeah I just didn't love those two palettes as much as the other ones and then their liquid lips I have not tried all of the different shades because they, they, they have a lot but the one that I'm actually wearing on my lips right now this is Rio beautiful shade it shows up like crazy as soon as you put it on it's just like boom electric pink i feel like a barbie doll right now but i find that the formula is a little bit on the drier side so that's why i have a bit of a gloss on top i find that that just makes it look less 
drying and I love the color. The color is so pretty. So this is my way of still being able to use it. Um, but by itself, I don't like it because it is, it just looks really flaky and it creates this like ring around my lips almost instantly as soon as I drink or eat anything. But I do find that putting a gloss on top, like I'll have, like I have my coffee and whatever you can see, it has like a little bit of the pink showing up there, but like, it hasn't created that like ring around the inside of my lip too harshly because it also has that gloss on there, which has hydrated the formula a little bit. So that's the only way that I will wear it. Um, but yeah, I do want to make mention of it because the color is so pretty. The other highlight palettes I'm just very not about. I found that there are a lot of other highlight palettes that I like a lot more than these ones um, that are less expensive. And so for example, the Glean palette, I loved this one for a long time, but they just don't pop on my skin um, the way that I want them to. I, I love a really strong highlight. And these ones are pretty for like a softer look, but they're not my favorite. I just wasn't a big fan of them in comparison to the metallic ones of the Sweets palette. I love that one a lot more. But really for me, there hasn't been like a, oh, this is a terrible product kind of experience from ABH. I feel like they wouldn't allow a product like that to go into market in the beginning, except for a couple of shipments of subculture. Apparently that missed the whole scale of, of quality control there. But they have a ton of products to choose from, a lot of stuff that I've really enjoyed over the years and things that I just keep going back to because I think they're really good quality. But that's kind of my addition of a buy or buy. I wanna know what you guys think. What is your least favorite or your favorite product from ABH that you swear by? Leave me a comment down below. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up and subscribe so you don't miss out on new videos every Thursday and Sunday. Check out the videos on the side here if you have missed any and the full playlist of buy or buy videos. I've done ColourPop, Too Faced, Urban Decay, NYX, Essence, like a ton of different brands. So go and check those out if you have missed any. And that is everything. I hope you guys are having an awesome, awesome weekend and I will see you guys all in my next video. Love you all. Mwah.